Okay, there we go. See what you remember from last week. You finished up the 6-2 homework, right? The 6-3, I mean 6-3. So we're done with 6-2 and 6-3. We have an exam this Wednesday, Thursday. Exam number four, <clears throat> Wednesday, we're going to have part one, Thursday, well, actually it's part one and part of part two, but anyway, part one is no calculator, remember that? <coughs> no calculator at all, and it only covers six, two, and six, three in the trick. That's all that's on there. You use your three by five card and draw the unit circle. It'd be a good idea, you know, small, medium, large, that whole thing. So, and then Thursday's part two. There's actually some of part two on Wednesday, and I'll let you do graphic calculator. Anyway, so, and then, um, that, that's it. Is there plenty of questions on the exam? Or Tomorrow we'll review. Go over practice exam tomorrow is the plan. All right. So how do we do these things? What? <laughs> so how do you do the question on the board? Yeah. Yeah, we got to find, um, what is it, the period, right? Remember the period formula? 2 pi over, I think I called it omega. I noticed in my notes I use k, so I'll start using k, whatever. It's 2 pi over k. What is k? K by K, I mean whatever's next to X. That's your K. You can call it whatever you want. I called it W last time, I think. Omega. Whatever. Different books call it different things. But it's 2 pi divided by whatever's next to X in the sine or cosine. That goes for sine or cosine. If you have the sine of KX or the cosine of KX... What you do is you grab the k, you grab the thing next to x, and you put 2 pi over the k. That will be the period. That will be how long until it starts repeating itself, right? That's the full, full length of its cycle, right? It'll cycle, repeat every whatever this comes out to be. So flip the one-third up like we always do, right? Fraction in the bottom fraction, flip it up. 2 pi times 3 over 1, that's 6 pi. So the period for this thing is 6 pi. That means it begins its thing at 0 and ends it at 6 pi. It'll repeat it again another 6 pi later. So it'll do its thing between 0 and 6 pi. It'll do it again between 6 pi and 12 pi, and on and on it goes. Does that make sense? We good with doing that? Just 2 pi over k, right? This will not be on Wednesday, Thursday's test. This is for the final. This will be on the final exam which is not that far away now, which is, what, it's a week after next? Wow. Next week's the last week of instruction. Finals week is after that. So Wednesday the 17th is our final. So this will be on Wednesday the 17th, a couple weeks. All right. So this homework will not be due till next week, next week, uh, next Monday. So anyway, <laughs> zero and six pi. Okay, now what is um, cosine? What is cosine? Do you remember the difference between sine and cosine? Sine, whenever you're graphing sine, he starts at zero and ends back at zero. Goes high, goes low, comes back to zero. That's sine. That's what sine does. What does cosine always do? Starts high, finishes high. Unless there's a negative, and that, that'll flip it upside down. But he doesn't start at zero. He doesn't start in the middle at zero, does he? Cosine starts high, finishes high, or if you have a negative in front of him, it'll flip him, he'll start low, end low. It's either a U or an upside down U. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, but the sine starts middle, ends middle, right? Anyway, we have cosine. So we're going to start high, but actually not high because of the negative. So positive 5 here, negative 5 there. We're going to start at the negative 5, aren't we? So we'll, we'll go like that. We'll go negative 5 on up, back down, like that. Wasn't such a good drawing, but you get the idea, right? So that's all I would require on the exam. Just show me the width, show me the bottom, the top, you know, where it starts, where it ends, and I know you can do it. You can answer anything they, they ask you for on that. Is that good? Which one is that, A, B, C, or D? Which one starts low? 
So oh, they, they're going all the way to 12 pi. Is it C? Yeah, it's C, isn't it? Yeah, because in 12 pi, it would do another one, huh? So it's C. Right, because here's, here's what they did. Right, C. Good? We all good with that? So the main thing is the period is 2 pi over K. 2 pi over K. K being whatever's next to X. And then know that sine starts 0 in 0, cosine starts high in time. All right. Okay, now they're going to put a minus 1 at the back. That's different. We haven't had a number added or subtracted to our sines and cosines yet. What, what is that going to do? You guys are experienced graphers. Yeah, what's it going to do? What is that minus 1? Is that a y effector or an x? Remember what we learned about how things affect graphs, right? Is that minus 1 out there? Is it a y or x? What the graphs are showing us is a y. It's a y, right? Because what? what if, it, if it was written like this, if it was y equals 2 sine like that, then it would be an x. It would be a right-left kind of thing. But it's not in there with x, so it's not an x. It's a y. So this is a y effect. So it means it's either up or it's down. Which one is it? I can see where it would be confusing at this point because I've said different things at different times. I kind of change my mind as we go along. No, I'm kidding. There's different ways they present it, and I show you how to handle it in different looks. Is that one up or is that one down? Down because it's not in front of Down because it's not next to Y. Parentheses are not parentheses. It's down. Here's the rule. It's just, I think this is the simple thing. Like, well, X, Y. Basically, if the number is right next to the letter, X or Y, no difference at all. If the number is right next to the X or the Y, it's always opposite. It's always opposite. So just keep that solid in your mind as you move into calculus next semester. If I was to move that over there, I'd have to add one to both sides, right? Right? Add one to both sides. I, you don't have to do this, but I'm just saying. That would be the same as this equation, wouldn't it? Right? This, this equation is the same as that equation. They're equivalent. Now you can tell. See, whenever the number's right next to the letter, it's opposite. So you see, if it was there, it'd be opposite of plus one, it'd be negative one. So it's down one, really. That's why I told you when the number's on the other side of, of the equal sign from the letter, from the x or the y, it's going to be the same as what you see. Negative one will be down one. Because if it was next to it, it would be opposite. So the main rule to remember is whenever it's next to it, it's opposite. So anyway, it's down one. So you know when all is said and done that this is going to be a down one. So here's my suggestion. Just do the whole graph as you know to do, ignoring the minus one out there. When you're all done, just pull it down one. Just pull the whole graph down one. So here we go. I'm going to set up my graph. Um, what's the period? It's just 2 pi because it's 2 pi over k, and k is just 1. It's just 2 pi because there's, because there's nothing next to x. There's just a 1 there, really, huh? So the period's just a normal 2 pi. So it's going to do its thing between 0 and 2 pi. It'll do one cycle, and then it'll just keep repeating. Okay. And what is, what is that 2 in the front going to do? What's it going to do? Amplitude too. That means it'll 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 reach a top of two. Oops, I'm erasing it. It'll reach a top of two and a bottom of negative two. Normally, so normally it would do that, right? But it, oh, you know how I, I just I just said to you, I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse what I just said. I just said do the minus one at the end. I think it's easier actually to do it in the beginning. What that minus one is gonna move it down one. Just grab the x-axis and move it down one right to here. I think that'll, that's actually easier. Just move it down one right away. Just grab your midline, right? Normally the midline is the x-axis. Just move that down one. This is your new midline, right? And then, and then what do you do? From here, and the, and the sign starts at zero, ends at zero, or on the midline. Starts on the midline, ends on the midline, right? Goes high and then goes low. Well, how high will it go? It'll go two above that. It'll, it'll go up to here. And it'll go 2 below that. It'll go down to negative 3. 
Does that make sense what I just did there? <coughs> Is that good? So let me, let me say that again. So I think it's nice just to set up your array. When they move these things up and down, the minus one, just grab your midline, move it down one, grab your x-axis, move it down one, that's what the minus one's gonna do. And then you know the amplitude is two, so go two above that and two below that. And that's the window that'll hold your sine graph. That'll work for sine or cosine. That's the window that'll hold your graph. So move the midline down one to negative one, and then the amplitude two being in the front, means go up two from the midline and down two, right? I took my midline and I went up one, two. And I took my midline and I went down one, two. And draw dotted lines. I think it'll help. So that's the window that's going to hold your sign, okay? And what's your sign graph going to do? Start at zero. Halfway through, it'll be back at zero. It's going to go high, hit up here, down to zero, low, hit down here, back to zero. Is that good? I'm just going to keep doing that. Go high, mid, low, mid. And just keep on going. All right, so which graph is right? Is it A? Kind of looks like A, huh? Yeah, A looks like it goes from minus 3 to... Yeah, yeah, A looks right. Here's the midline. Here's the midline. Yeah, halfway through is pi. Right? Yep. It's hitting it's hitting the midline again at pi. Yeah, that's it. N is A. We good there? I feel like you can do that on a test in two weeks, called the final exam. All right, you gonna be ready for that? It's got like everything. Everything is on that final exam. What I'll do is I'll after I grade your fourth exam, I'll put all the exams, the old exams available online, the keys, the answers. So then you can just study your old exams for the final. That's going to be what I suggest to do. All right, let's try that one. So start with the midline. What's that minus one going to do? Down one, right? So grab. So do that first. Make your new midline. So I would just right away just say, okay, here we go. Here's my graph. Um, I'm going to go down one, negative one. There's my midline, right? That's what the minus one's going to do. And then how far above and below that midline are we going to go? Yeah, the amplitude is five, huh? Yeah, it's going to go down first. So from the negative one midline, go down five, so that'll put you at At down six altogether, huh? Wait, did I go down too far? I think I got confused. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I did. So down at negative six, and then up five. One, two, three, four, five. Up at positive four, so I went up five and down five. And there's my window. It's going to hold my sine graph. Does that make sense how I got that set up first off? Kind of just get the template to fit it in. Is that good? So the minus one out here made the midline, made the whole graph go down one. And the amplitude is 5, so it'll go above the midline, go up 5 and down 5 from the midline of negative 1. Draw your three dotted lines. Those are guidelines, kind of, they're not really asymptote lines, they're just guidelines to help us draw the graph. All right, take it from there now. Find the period, and then graph the sign.
this okay? Is this working out for you all? And so with the period 2 pi over k, 2 pi over k, so it's 2 pi over, what's k? Uh, pi over 4. So the pi over 4 is our k, right? So then that's going to be 2 pi, flip up the 4 over pi, right? Pi's cancel, it's 8. Is that good? The period's 8. That means between 0 and 8, it'll do its thing. It'll do its cycle. Well, it's supposed to be in the midline here. Let me put that on the midline. Whoops. Getting off a little bit. So right here, it's actually on the midline, right? So between... Between 0 and 8 on the midline, the sine graph will do one cycle. Is that okay? Am I racing ahead? We good? And then we just draw a sign in that window, right? <clears throat> now remember, the sign starts at, starts at zero, rises usually, rises first, hits zero, falls back to zero, right? It always hits zero halfway. Let me put that in. It always hits zero halfway, so that would be a four, huh? It always hits zero again halfway sign does. Sign starts at zero, rises, hits zero, falls, hits zero, huh? Whereas cosine starts high, finishes high, right? Anyway, so what, what is the fact that it's negative 5 going to do to the sine? The negative 5 amplitude, the negative 5 multiplier. Flips it upside down. So instead of going high first, it'll go low first. Then it'll go high. It'll hit right here and right there. That's actually, it. if you're interested, you can tell it's at 6 and this is at 2, huh? Is that Okay. That, there's, our, there's one cycle of our sine graph. Well, it's going to show at least two cycles. Okay. So I'll go to 16. So I'll just do it again then. And this will be... I'll go down, up, up, down. There's, there's two cycles of the sine. Because they set up in the instructions um, to show at least two cycles. So there we go. I showed two cycles. <laughs> Just keeps on going forever to the right and the left. Huh? Which graph is it? Is it B? I can't even hardly tell. B. Is it B? Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, anyway, you, it's not multiple choice on the final. Questions on that? Is that okay? Anything I can answer? Is that making sense how we did that? Okay. These out backwards a little bit. So write the equation of a sine function that has the given characteristics. The amplitude is 8 and the period is 4 pi. So now they want me to work backwards. <laughs> I like these. Hint, hint. I'm so obvious, right? There's no secrets with me. This is on the final, right? These work backwards. I, I, the reason is because this is especially practical. This is exactly what an engineer would do, for example, or anybody using this in real life. They would have something in the real world, whether it be the orbits of the moon or the waves moving in and out or the alternating current coming out of the wall or a Ferris wheel moving up and down. A million things in life that cycle, I keep repeating themselves, and you think, all right, I need an equation. An engineer, for example, would need an equation to represent that motion so they can do other things with it. And all they would have, you know, the, the, the little current coming out of the wall doesn't tell you, by the way, I'm sine of 3x plus 2. It doesn't tell you that. It's just you just take your little devices and you measure, oh, it's, it's going high and then low, high and then low. It's doing a cycle every whatever seconds, you know, and that's all you have. You, need to, you are the one that needs to take the real life data and turn it into an equation that can then be used to do other things with it. So this is real life. It's this direction. Nobody... Usually, in real life, gives you a sine curve to start with. What we were just doing was not real. This is real. Then they're just saying, hey, uh, you got something coming out of a wall or whatever. Amplitude is 8. That's the highest the voltage hits, maybe, or the current. 8. And the period is 4 pi. Every 4 pi seconds, maybe, it repeats its cycle. High and then low. High and then low. You just measure it out of the wall. It goes high and then low. High and then low. 
every four pi seconds, that's the period, and the amplitude is eight, and the highest it hits is eight. All right, write your equation. Won't be multiple choice. How do we do it? How do we take this information and work backwards to a sine graph? Sine equation, I mean. Well, we know, uh, let's start with our period thing, huh? Generally, we want sine of kx, don't we? That's our general thing. And maybe, and amplitude goes in the front, doesn't it? So how about we just start with a sine kx. That's the basic look, right? Amplitude, sine, and we know what the a is. That's 8. That part's easy, huh? It's 8 sine kx. Good so far? We, we have that much. Whoops. 8 sine kx. Kx, good so far? We know the amplitude is 8. They just handed us that on a silver platter. But now what we need to do is find what K is, don't we? So we know period is, what's the formula for period? K over 2 pi. And what is the period? Whoop, not 2, 4 pi. The period they're telling me is 4 pi. Two pi over k. I have it upside down. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Thanks, Robert. I got it. I got it all flipped. I hope I'm glad somebody said something. I was testing you. Good job. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You can just do that. Huh? Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. So yeah, I got that accidentally flipped. Period is two pi over k. It's that way, huh? So period, which they're telling me is four pi, is two pi over k. So I got to solve that for k. How do I solve for k there? Yeah, put this over one diagonal diagonal, one one good way. So four pi k is one times two pi. Good like that. And so then just uh, so four pi k is two pi, divided by four pi. K is a half. I solve for k. So the formula is eight sine of kx. What's k? A half. There's the formula, 8 sine half, eight sine half x, which is that first option they have there. Does that make sense? That's real life. That's what you would do. You would have something that's repeating itself, and you would set up a, an equation. That, that would now be useful to people in the real world for anything that goes through a cycle, which is all kinds of things in the real world. They could then use that, and they could know exactly what it's going to be in the tie, and it's low, and or whatever else they need to fit together with it. That's what trigonometry is all about, to represent things in the real world that cycle. It's made up for that purpose. Questions on that? Is that good? All right. That's very much real life. You'll have a, you'll have a what's it called, an O-meter, an oscillator? Electrical engineers, I took a, I was, a, I was electrical engineering when I transferred, no, I was, I was computer engineering when I transferred to Cal Poly, and then I got out of that quick. I, I can't do anything with my hands. I changed the map. I realized my hands are no good. It's all in my head or nothing. Seriously, we're all different. For me, I, I showed up in engineering lab at Poly. I transferred as a junior, you know, so I was already taking my junior level classes. And guys, just the teacher, just professors threw out breadboards. I never even heard of a breadboard. I like cutting bread. That's all I knew about a breadboard. A breadboard said <laughs> wire cuts up on it. That was news to me. But all those other people in the class, they were just, they knew it. I guess they had just grown up wiring things. I had not. So, I just, so anyway, so we, threw it, we had to wire things, and I was having all kinds of trouble. I thought, oops, I'm the wrong major. I'm going to change, so I changed the math. Anyway, so, but we used to, uh, for one semester, one year, we used an, an oscillator scope, and so you would see these kind of things. You'd measure, say, a circuit, and they have machinery, O scope, that you would, uh, I think it's called that, I remember the oscillator, and it would show the picture of the graph on the oscillator scope. So can you turn that, and we would do that kind of thing, into an equation? So give it a try. So take that picture, that's what happens in the real world, and turn it into an equation. Let's, uh, you could do sine or cosine. I don't know if you realize that they're the same thing. They're just shifted off of each other. What would be easiest on this one? What would be the natural fit? Look at how it starts. Does it start at zero or does it start high? 
starts at zero. So it'd be natural to do sine, wouldn't it? Let's just do sine. You could do cosine, but that'd be harder. Let's just do sine. Be a natural fit for sine. Now, if it started high, I would go with cosine. Or low, because that's just cosine upside down. You get with me on that? If it starts high or low, then cosine would be the easy fit. If it starts at zero, do sine. So hone in. Don't let the graph confuse you. Hone in on one cycle, which is right there. This is one cycle. Forget about the rest of it. Forget about the rest of it. Just focus on one cycle. One cycle. Did I, did I scribble over everything? You can't see anything now? There we go. So focus on one cycle from here to here. What number is that? Is that six? That's six. From zero to six, huh? So just one cycle from zero to six. So that's its period, huh? The period of that graph is six. One cycle every six. The period is six. So use that to find the K, or they're calling it by the omega. They're going back to the omega, whatever they want to call it. Find the thing next to X, the way we just did on the last one. And what's the amplitude? How high is it going? Nine. This is like 9, huh? Nine. Amplitude 9. How do we know if it's a positive 9 or a negative 9 in the front? It first goes up, so it's positive 9, huh? Positive 9. So it's, it's A sine KX, or omega X, whatever you want to call it. So it's 9 sine KX. How do we find the K? Well, the period is 2 pi over K. So the period, which is clearly 6, that's the period we can tell by looking at the graph, is 2 pi over K. Solve for K. Put this over 1, diagonal, diagonal. So we get 6K is 1 times 2 pi. 6K is 2 pi. Are we good so far? Did everybody see what I'm doing? So the, the period is 6. Everybody see that? The period here is 6. Period is 6. So I, I wrote period is 2 pi over K. 6 is 2 pi over k, cross multiply, <laughs> solve for k, divide by 6, k is, reduce that, pi over 3, huh? So k is pi over 3. So bring that back and plop that in. The formula is 9 sine of pi over 3 x. k is pi over 3. Um, I think it goes up first, doesn't it? Goes up first, so, so be positive. I mean, I don't know, I was kind of assuming that the beginning cycle would be where the negative 3 is at, and it shows, that would show a negative sign. Uh, oh, you mean you were going back to um, here? Yeah, because we're assuming the period starts there, but I mean, that could just be two cycles. Well, if I write the formula like this, without any plus or minus next to the x, that starts it at 0 which is where I'm starting it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I'm just saying off of this graph. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I was assuming that that's two cycles. Of period of six. And it starts at negative three and ends at nine. Oh, that is two cycles. So it's a third that goes down. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's negative. I don't know if it is or not. I'm just making an assumption of what I think. Right, right. So I see if I understand you right. You were looking and going, start here. Right. And, like, that's it's one cycle. Six. And then a second cycle, and so you're saying it starts at negative three and goes down. If you do, you could do it that way. It is possible. It's a lot harder for the negative three start. You can't you can't just you can't just go sine of kx. You have to do something which I can't think of off the top of my head, but it's it's some other number. Call it in. You have to put a shift in there, and it's not just negative three because the k changes that. It's Uh huh. Down when it's negative, 
Oh, okay. Yeah, we can go type it in. Um, it, it, nine sine. Yeah, so we have it right. This answer is correct. Let's type it in and we'll see that. Nine sine. If I can um, answer your question a little better. Um, let's here. Let me go back to this one. So, so I, I see. Remember, remember this thing goes on. Whoops, come on, pencil. The thing goes on forever, right? right? So I can start anywhere I want. I don't have to start where they started drawing it. Does that make sense? You can start anywhere you want. It goes on and on to the right and left. So I thought what would be easiest would be to start at zero. I don't mean height to zero. I mean x-axis zero. Why? Because then I can just use the sine kx or the cosine kx without any x shift. If you want to start, if you want to start over here, for example, you see that's not at x equals zero. That's at x is negative two. And so you're going to have to have some kind of a shift on your x, and it's, it's actually very complex. It's not just minus 2 or plus 2. It's thrown off by the k. It's super complex, and I just don't want to go there. Does that make sense, though, why that other method wouldn't work? Yeah, you got yeah, to start at the 0. Yeah, and that will make it easier. Then just go from there. Yeah, good. Good question. Down, because they are not easy. All right, let's try that one. Honestly, people miss these by the droves on the final. I mean, there, there it is. No secrets. I feel like I'm just giving away the farm. Which, and that's what I expect. I'll get to the final, and like, everybody will get it. I'm thrilled. So, so here you go. No secrets. One of them is on the final. It is literally on the final. I give you a P, and I take it just like this. I just copy a graph out of the book, or where I can't remember where I got it now. I just copy it right in the final. No multiple choice. I just give you that, and I say, give me the equation. Sine or cosine. And three quarters of the class misses it. And it's big points. Things on the final are big. They're weighty at that point. Because it usually counts for the final, and it's counting double exam, usually. You know, so it's big. No misses. But you're going to have to practice more than just what you did in class. So, so, so like we were talking about, the good discussion with Robert, you want to start at zero, huh? X, I mean, x is zero, because that's, that's how all of our equations work, so you don't have an x shift. Should I do sine, or should I do cosine? Yeah, you could, technically, either one's possible, much easier to do cosine, because cosine is the one that starts high and ends high. So, there's one cycle, huh? Remember, always be, be close. So start in, start in x is 0. Decide if you should use sine or cosine most naturally. I'll use cosine because cosine starts high inside. Show, show one period. So what's, what's the period? It's a half. He does one cycle between 0 and a half. So his period is the width of his period. His cycle is a half. And, of course, we have the amplitude in the front. That making sense? And so KX, whoops, period, I should say. A little, our handy dandy form of the period is 2 pi over K. What's the period? It's a half. It's 2 pi over K. Solve, we good to there? Solve for K, right? So I just put in period is a half. I got that from the graph. I'm just looking at the graph, I could tell the period was a half. So solve for k, diagonal, diagonal, 1 times k is 2 times 2 pi, k is 4 pi. So we've got k. So this is a cosine kx. What's the amplitude? 6 sevenths. Six sevenths. How do you know it's not negative 6 sevenths? It starts high. If it started low, it would be negative 6 sevenths. The k is 4 pi. k is 4 pi. There it is. Okay, now is that one of my answers? Oops. It is this one. Now, which is an equation for the... Now, there is a sine version that would work as well. Oh, it's none of those. Good, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, they're not going to be that tricky. Good. So there it is. That's the only one. Questions on that? How do I know? How do I know none of those sine ones might not fit right? 
Sine is shifted. Remember? Sine is a shift. If any of those sine ones was right, it would have to be a shifted sine. It couldn't be a normal. See how this is just a normal sine with no shift on the x? That can't be. A normal sine with no x shifted starts at 0, 0 if you don't shift it. And that ain't what my graph is doing. There, no way and no way and no way. I'd have to look closer if they had something <laughs> added or subtracted to the sine x value. We're not going to go there in this class. But that's how I'd know right away on that. Yep. Sine is cosine shifted a quarter of a period over the x. Yeah, or vice versa. Yeah, both of them are a quarter cycle mm -hmm. shift. Yeah, that's right. That, hey, why, why do all the trig functions, why do we have like sine and then cosine? And tangent and cotangent. And secant and co, what's with this co stuff? Why do we have like six totally different names? What, what's the co? Yeah, they work together. Yeah, they work together. They do, like a co-pilot. But in a particular, particular way. Do, do anybody know? You guys took trick, right? I know, it's hard to remember all that stuff. Maybe you can go into detail. Sign to what? No, no, that's inverse. We'll get there. Co stands for the word complement. What's that from geometry? Complementary angles? They sum to be 90 degrees. Sine and cosine are shifted 90 degrees. Secant and cosecant, 90 degrees. Tangent and cotangent, 90 degrees shifts up from each other. That's where that comes from. Uh, is, it, is, is it where they're equal at? Like, for example, like a sine of 60 should be the cosine of... Um, I don't know unless... I, I, I don't, you know me, I don't memorize anything, so I just have to look at them and think. Let me think. Um, so sine starts here, goes from 0 to 2 pi. Cosine starts high um, between 0 and 2 pi. Um, so, so therefore, what would you be right there? That would be like where the sine starts. That's back, what is that? Back pi over 2, right, back 90. So cosine, so what does that mean? Cosine is back. I guess cosine is, is that back or is that forward? I, I don't know. Cosine's off. <laughs> by pi over 2, or sine's off. There's, there's their difference. See, that's minus 90. Or cosine. If you, if you go back 90, that cosine looks like just like a sine. So basically, if you take that cosine and you move it to the right, so if you go x plus pi over 2, that is sine. No, no, whoops, whoops I just did that backwards. I, no, no, that was right, that was right. <laughs> yeah, you see that? Can you tell that by looking at the graph? This is a cosine graph, right? It starts high. But if I take it and I shift this graph to the right, 90 degrees, he'll go here. He'll look just like this. He'll look just like that one. He'll be sine. So you see, 90 degree shift between those two. All right, well, anyway, we're not formally going to do that in this class. All right, give it a try. Remember, this, this is big points in the final. Lots of people miss these. The majority usually miss these. You better put his midline on. His midline has been moved. You gotta get you gotta get him into the normal look. You know what I mean? They try to throw a curveball at you. They try to give you a weird look, like a pitcher trying to throw you off with a knuckleball. You gotta bring it back into your normal vision range. Put the midline on there. Put the midline. Where's the midline? Um, yeah, that's right, because the bottom here looks like minus ten, doesn't it? Isn't that minus ten the bottom? So mid of that is minus 5, good job, which would be about right there, right? So the midline is minus 5, the top is 0, the bottom is minus 10. So look at it that way. Pretend that's your x-axis. And what is that minus 5 midline going to do? Well, it's going to do one of these. It's not that one for sure. <coughs> right? We good so far? It's going to be a minus 5 at the back, isn't it? That's what moves it down 5. Right? Okay, so far. Now put the starting and the ending dot, but have it all based on that new midline. Starts right there, ends right there. <laughs> now remember, you're pretending the new midline is your x-axis. 
So if, if this dotted line was really my x-axis, if the dotted line, that's what you need to think, if the dotted line, the new midline, it's all relative to the midline, was my x-axis, would this graph be one that starts high or starts on the midline? Starts high. This is a cosine. But you could get thrown off. You say, no, no, it starts at zero, zero. Well, that zero, zero is not really the middle, is it? It's the top of the graph. Which graph starts at its top, ends at its top, cosine? Most natural. That'll most directly fit without any 90 degree shift. That'll most directly uh, fit with cosine. That's a cosine. with a minus 5 at the back, huh? We good so far? So I'm piecing that together. I'm really leading you through these thoughts, so you need to try this on your own later. We know that much? What's the amplitude? How high and low above the midline does it go? 5 above, 5 below. So the amplitude is also 5. So we have 5 cos kx minus 5. And what's the period? 3 fourths. It goes from 0 to 3 fourths. It does one cycle. So the period is 3 fourths. Right? It's done one whole cycle. It started at its high point and went back to its high point between 0 and 3 fourths. So period equals 2 pi over k. Period is... 3 fourths is 2 pi over k. Solve for k. Diagonal, diagonal. 3k is 4 times 2 pi. Bring it over here. 3k is 8 pi. Divide by 3. k is 8 pi over 3. So our answer then, we've got it. 5 cosine 8 pi over 3x minus 5. Yeah, it's this one, isn't it? No multiple choice on the final. Is that good? See how we had to find the new midline, and then it's all relative to that midline. All right, let's try one more. Just trying it on your own versus in class. All right, let's try that one. So start here. Remember, we started x is 0 and ends here. He's already got his midline, so that's good. No, no vertical shifting. So um, is that a cosine or a sine? Cosine. cosine. It's a negative 7 cosine. Because it starts low, ends low, huh? It's upside down cosine. Negative 7. The period? 2 pi over k. No. K over 2 pi, right? I, I always get that for you. Confused. It's 2 pi over k. Yeah. Anyway, what's the uh, period? 2 pi over 3. There's one cycle, right? So don't be thrown off by this cycle on the left. Who cares? We just want one cycle. It's the extra stuff that can confuse you. Solve for k. 2 pi k is 3 times 2 pi. 2 pi k is 6 pi divided by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi. K is 3. So our answer is minus 7 cosine 3x. All right. So this is not due until Monday. So this is 6-4. It's not on the exam. It's on the final. So it's not due until Monday. Don't worry about it. Start looking at that practice exam.
Practice exam number four tomorrow. We'll do as much of it as we can and we'll review. Have a good day.